Welcome to Mindful Monday. My name is Allison Knight and I am the health coach for Employee Health Center. Today we finish up our Mindful Way workbook, but not our Mindful Practice. We have learned about recognizing aversion and those feelings of just wanting to avoid. We've learned about allowing things to be recognizing and identifying those unpleasant and uncomfortable emotions and feelings. And once we do this, realizing how it affects our body, the bracing, the tension, the tightness in our body, and by acknowledging them, allowing them to then pass by, allowing ourselves to move forward and not get stuck in that negative feedback loop. We've thought, we've talked about seeing thoughts as thoughts, realizing that they're not the truth, that we're creating this story based on feedback we're receiving with various senses, and the more that we gather, the more that story changes, and so our thoughts are not necessarily fact. We've also talked about how various activities in our life can either nourish or dampen our mood, so it either brings us up or brings us down, making a list of those and identifying which ones feed our happiness or which ones fuel those uncomfortable and unpleasant feelings. We've also talked about then furthering that and recognizing changing what you do can change how you feel, creating a list of mastery activities, activities that aren't necessarily causing joy while you're doing them, but create a sense of accomplishment afterwards or a simple list of pleasury activities that give you pleasure while you do them. Having that available so that you can then create a relapse signature or an early warning sign of all your triggers and your unhelpful thought patterns, and also having that list of things to do to help you pull yourself out of that downward spiral. We've been wrapping up the last few weeks and talking about how do you create that sustainable mindful practice? How do you bring that into your every day? You know, the more that you continue to do it, the more it's going to continue to help you when you really need it and help you keep more level-headed and balanced throughout your life and your day. We've talked about starting small and building on those small steps so that you feel successful and that you're able to continue doing it. And now we want to identify a heartfelt intention for sticking with that mindful practice. So I want you to take a minute to get comfortable, take a few deep centering breaths. When you feel comfortable, gently close your eyes and ask yourself, what is most important to me in my life or what do I value most that mindfulness practice might help with? See if it's possible to let awareness respond in its own way, in its own time, allowing the depths of your being to process the question at a level beyond the usual thinking mind. Just take a little while to think about it. And when you are ready, take a big, slightly deeper breath and flutter your eyes open. If you discovered a reason to practice mindfulness that connects with something about which you care deeply, take a moment to jot it down and write or remind yourself, as best I can, I intend to practice to continue mindfulness practice because, and write your motivation, your value, your reason down. If you're struggling or you didn't have enough time to think about it, Realize that we all already have something deeply rooted in us that's motivating to sustain our practice. And that's the simple, precious birthright that we all share to care about people, including ourselves. And that right there can be your motivation for continuing your mindfulness practice. Also, make sure that you're identifying any previous obstacles or barriers that you had to overcome and include 
that list of things you can do, those solutions to overcome those barriers and obstacles as they come into your daily life. Now some tips for sustaining a daily formal mindfulness practice. Remember, start small. You can always build onto it. Include that three minute breathing space. It's always that first line of defense. You can do it anywhere and you can do it quickly. If it's possible, try to be consistent and keep that practice at certain times of day, as well as in response to those times you feel overwhelmed. If you practice like caring for a plant, watering it little by little, instead of throwing a bucket at it all at once. See practice as a way to nourish yourself instead of just another thing on your to-do list. Explore ways to inspire and re-inspire your practices, maybe sharing it with other people. And remember that you can always begin again. I think that's the most important thing is it's never too late to be brand new or to start again in anything that you do. Some other tips are to make sure that you're noticing your posture during the day. Noticing the way that you move when you walk or stand, noticing your facial expressions, taking a minute to unclench your jaw and release your shoulders, identify that tension in your body. Bring awareness when you are walking and talking or listening, be actively listening and paying attention to that moment. Bring awareness to those daily activities that we do on autopilot, like driving to work or brushing our teeth. Before you go to sleep at night, take a few minutes and bring your attention to your breathing. And other times of day, if you're starting to feel overwhelmed and things are spiraling out of control, remember to use that breath as a way to help identify your thoughts, feelings, and emotions in that, in that moment. Allow yourself to use your breath to recenter and gather yourself and then expand that awareness as a whole. And again, that's talking about that three minute breathing space, our first line of defense. Use that. Consciously find a dignified position, then identify those thoughts, feelings, and sensations in your current moment, in your current experience. Gather your attention onto your breath and center yourself and then expand that awareness to your body as a whole, to the present experience. And then choose a door. Choose to re-enter the original situation with a new mindset, even if it's slightly different. Bring open, friendly awareness to your body sensations that are directly linked with those emotions and feelings that we might, trying to, might be trying to avoid. Consciously approach any negative thinking patterns as mental events and identify those unhelpful thought patterns that you continuously have. And finally, action. Take care of yourself with that pleasure or mastery list of activities or any mindful activity or practice that you found helpful. The breathing space, meditation, mindful movement, whatever works best for you. And as we wrap up the Mindful Way workbook, I want to read a short poem for you. Love after love. The time will come when with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome. And say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back to your heart, to itself, to the stranger who has loved you. All your life whom you ignored for another. Who knows you by heart, take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit, feast on life. Hopefully you can take everything that we've talked about in the last 28 weeks about mindfulness practice and continuing it 
into your life. Although we are done with the Mindful Way workbook for now, we are going to continue the practices we've learned in here. And I will also be continuing Mindful Monday and we will be going through some other practices, meditations in the next coming weeks, such as self-love, guided imagery, a nature walk, all other practices that you can then implement into what you've learned through this Mindful Way program. Thank you so much for joining me this week. We will see you next week on Monday, and I hope that you have a wonderful and mindful Monday.